The Great and Powerful Trixie's Secrets Revealed Chapter 2 The Part You Don't by P.J.A. Brony Let's begin. Twilight's legs were shaky as they carried her up to the stage. The eyes of every pony were on her. Friends looked particularly nervous, but Spike had a look of absolute confidence. So what do you think you could possibly do that Trixie cannot? Trixie asked. Twilight was visibly nervous, but she concentrated and cast a spell. A few yards from the wagon, there were some reeds growing. A wind came out of nowhere and started to blow through them. As it did, they made a sound like a wooden flute. It started off quietly, but then grew into a pleasant lullaby. Oh, number 16, said Spike. Music magic. I'm sure Trexie can't do that. Huh, is that all you've got, said Trexie. Your simple tune is nothing compared to the symphony of spectacularness that is the great and powerful Trixie. She danced a pirouette to the right side of her stage. From behind a panel emerged trumpets, trombones, and a tuba. Suspended in midair, they played a march that drowned out Twilight Song. The ponies watching gave a gasp and then stomped their hooves for Trixie. The pegasi in the air looped and rolled in celebration. Spike's expression fell. Don't give up, Twilight, he called. She just got lucky. Try something else. Um, alright, how about clairvoyance? For the first time, Trixie's face showed off that she was worried. Twilight turned and scanned the crowd. Rainbow Dash, pick up something and hide it from me, and I'll tell you what it is. Rainbow was surprised to be included, and she looked around for an object to use. On stage, Twilight turned her back to the crowd. Trixie looked at her through narrow eyes. Hey, said Applejack. Rainbow cried out from below. Okay, Twilight, I've got something. Guess what it is? Twilight closed her eyes. Her horn glowed again, and a white mist formed in front of her. In the middle of the mist, like a television picture, was a blob of color. She concentrated harder and it came into focus. It was obviously Rainbow and she was holding her hooves above her head. In them was a long string of something manella. She intensified her magic and the picture became crystal clear. Got it, she said. It's Applejack's lasso. She turned around and saw that Rainbow was indeed holding the rope in her hooves. Twilight wore a look of relief. But Trixie crossed in front of her. Big deal, she said. She probably set that up with her friends before. Let Trixie show you some real magic. She put her hoof to her chin and frowned. She surveyed the audience, then pointed at snips and snails. You two. The colt stared and blinked. If you're going to swipe cookies from the bakery, the least you could do was to bring some for Trixie. Snails took a deep breath. It's true, he said. We did take cookies from the sugar cube corner. How did she know? Asked Snips. She must be a psychic. She's amazing. Snail's eyes expanded, and he stared at Truxie in admiration. The ponies stomped their applause again. Twilight hung her head. She wished she could just disappear. That gave her an idea. I know there's something you can't do. Teleportation. She focused her magic again. Her teleportation spell was inconsistent at best, but she hoped that her nerves would give her the energy she needed. In a moment, she vanished in a shower of sparks and reappeared back in her spot next to Spike. Ha! Beat that! Trixie chuckled. Oh, ye of little talent. Watch this, every pony. She reached into the back of the wagon and drew out a large curtain. It covered the entire apparatus. After a wink at the crowd, she pulled it aside with her teeth. The whole wagon had disappeared. The crowd hooted and hollered, even louder than they had the first two times. Twilight's jaw dropped. She shook her head. I've never even heard of another unicorn who could do something like that. She really is more powerful than me. Trixie gave a sinister laugh. Was there ever any doubt? She turned round to indicate the end of the show 
and most of the ponies watching returned to what they were doing. Snips and Snails remained to watch Trixie. Twilight simply didn't want to move. She had collapsed on the ground, her hooves unfolding beneath her. Spike and her pony friends stayed to comfort her. I know that trying to show off wouldn't end well, said Twilight. It wasn't you that was trying to show off, said Applejack. You got Bafoodle up onto the stage, and I think you did pretty well. Rarity came over and put a hoof on Twilight's shoulder. You shouldn't feel bad, dear. Your magic is much more practical than hers. Why, that clairvoyant cell was simply amazing. You must show me how it works. Yeah, said Rainbow. Who cares about some silly traveling magician anyways? Twilight looked over at Trixie. Apparently some pony does, she said. Snips and snails were fawning over Trixie, as if she were royalty. They kept their heads bowed. That whole show was so cool, said Snails. You're the best, great and powerful Trixie, said Snips. Can we buy you a smoothie? Trixie pointed her nose upwards, enjoying the attention. Hmm, Trixie is a bit parched. Be sure to ask for extra hay. You got it, said Snips, and he ran off. Snails managed to find a chassis, logue, and a bamboo fan. He was preparing to act as a gentle colt in waiting. Can I help you relax? He said. Let me take your hat and cloak. No, Trixie said quickly. Er, that is, the great and powerful Trixie is never seen in public without her finery. It serves to remind the ponies of how wonderful and magical she truly is. And Twilight, with a defeated look, could only stand and watch. The other ponies walked away from her. Only Spike stood by. It was late at night. Crickets were chirping and owls were hooting. Twilight wrapped a scarf around her neck and opened the library door. Twilight, where are you going? asked Spike. I just want to take a little walk. Spike had his nightcap on and clearly thought the time was more suited to sleeping. Don't feel bad, Twilight. Trixie's just a loud mouth. You're still ten times the pony that she is. Twilight looked back over her shoulder and forced out a smile. Thanks, but I really want to be alone for a little bit. She plodded in the night, her head down. Images of Trixie's kept appearing before her. It doesn't seem right, she said to herself. For some pony so full of herself to have that much magic. But clearly she does. Twilight slapped one hoof into the other. Well, there's no sense beating myself up about it. I'm a student, and I've got to learn wherever I can. I need to go to Trixie and ask nicely if she'll help me improve my own magical skills. Maybe someday I'll be able to reach her level. With a renewed sense of purpose, she quickened her pace, reaching the square where Trixie had parked her wagon. Twilight saw her closing up for the night. She moved closer, but saw Trixie looking all round with her eyes narrowed. Hmm, what is she doing? Twilight said. She snuck up on the wagon. Trixie went inside and, with one last look to make sure no pony was around, slammed the window shut. She had a candle burning and all Twilight could see was the silhouette of Trixie against the shade. Whew. Trixie said. What a long day. If I fooled another town, I'll be rolling in their bits tomorrow. She took off her cloak, then she took off her hat. Twilight's expression became one of shock. But how could she? That sneak. The next day, the sun was up, and the crowd was even larger. They had formed a line, and Trixie was at the front of it, back in her costume. Snips and snails were at her side. A dreamy look on their faces. As they made their way towards the wagon, each pony dropped a bit into a collection bag that Snails was holding. Rainbow Dash, Rarity, and Applejack were in the line waiting when Twilight and Spike came prancing up. They all turned their heads to look at her. Twilight, said Applejack, are we glad to see you. Spike said that last night you were feeling down. 
Rarity flipped her hair and stepped up. Yes, there's nothing to worry about. I told Applejack that you're too big of a pony to let a brash unicorn like Trixie keep you away. Rainbow was hovering next to them, burning off nervous energy by pumping her wings. I'm glad you're feeling better. You come to see the show. It's rotten that we've got to pay two bits today, she said. You can save your bits, girls, Twilight said. There was going to be a show, all right, but it's not going to be the one she planned. Hey, Trixie. Trixie raised her head from the bag and looked down the line to see who was addressing her. Well, if it isn't the amateur from yesterday, I see that you've come around to admit to every pony that the great and powerful Trixie is the most powerful, magical unicorn in Equestria. Hardly. Every pony, listen up. Twilight marched up to the front of the line with all heads turned in her direction. This so-called most magical unicorn is nothing but a fraud, and I'll prove it. Twilight's horn glowed, and a matching glow formed around Trixie's hat. Stop it, said Trixie. What are you doing? Let Trixie go at once. She reached for the hat with her hooves and tried to jam it on her head. She was fighting the magic strongly. Changing tacks, Twilight charged forward and leaped in the air. She caught the brim of Trixie's hat in her teeth and yanked it off her head. Trixie landed a few feet from the stage and spat out the hat triumphantly. All the ponies gasped. Snip's mouth fell open. Snails dropped the bag of coins. Every pony just stared. I don't believe it, said Snips. Where's her horn, said Snails. She doesn't have one because she's not even a unicorn, said Twilight. Trixie had her head down in embarrassment at being exposed, but it only let every pony see her forehead more clearly. She was still a very pretty pony, but she was definitely not a unicorn. Why, she's nothing but a stinking earth pony, said Rainbow Dash. Applejack again gave her a look that threatened to bore a hole through her side, and Rainbow felt it. Er, that is, A, hey, she tricked us all, boo. The ponies stopped and muttered in protest. Trixie turned tailed and hitched herself to the wagon, dashing away as fast as her hooves could carry her. Twilight stood there with a satisfied look on her face. Well, my word, said Rarity, I never even suspected to think that some pony would fake being a unicorn. What an uncultured thing to do. Applejack kicked up her hooves at the excitement. Well, you sure showed her. It took some real smarts to figure out what was going on. And did you see the look on her face? Rainbow Dash said, doubled over with laughter. She was so upset, I think she was going to cry. You were awesome, Twilight. Twilight's satisfied look faltered. Yeah, she said. I guess I was. She looked off in the direction that Trixie had run. Again, the crickets were chirping. Again, the owls were hooting. Again, Twilight opened the door of the library, scarf around her neck. Are you going out again? said Spike. You're getting to be a real night owl. Don't worry, Spike. I just have something that I have to take care of. Don't wait up for me. I wasn't planning on it, Spike said. He started snoring before the door finished closing. Twilight walked to the edge of town. The road led over a hill. As she climbed up, she saw where Trixie had pulled her cart to the side of the road. She approached the wagon and heard a gentle sobbing from within. Climbing the stairs, Twilight knocked on the door with her hook. Go away, whoever you are, Trixie's muffled voice said. The great and powerful Trixie's show is closed forever. Trixie, it's Twilight Sparkle. May I come in? Oh, the real unicorn. Come to rub it in some more. Trixie is too tired to speak with you. Be gone. Twilight called into the door. Please, Trixie, I just want to talk. There's no reason we can't be friends. The latch rattled and the door opened. Trixie, in her cape but without her hat, 
stood there looking askance at Twilight. Wordlessly, she turned around and went back into the wagon. Twilight followed. Look, she said, I know that we got off on the wrong hoof, but if you had just toned down the boasting, ha, said Trixie, turning abruptly, as if you're not showing off just as much with how much magic you have. I'm really not, said Twilight. I'm a unicorn, and I do magic. Why do you pretend that you're something you're not? Trixie busied herself straightening up the inside of the wagon. It's all right for you, coming from Ponyville. You've probably never even been to Cantalot. Twilight started to interrupt in order to correct her, but Trixie was oblivious and continued her story. The first time I passed through, I could see the difference between the big city and the small towns as plain as the horn on your head. Canterlot was filled with unicorns, running everything by magic. They led the easy life there, while the poor earth ponies have to dig at living out of the ground with their hooves. I wasn't going to stand for it. There was no way that I would let an accident of birth keep me away from the bright lights and the wide avenues. If I couldn't do magic naturally, I'd just have to make my own. No pony would have to know, as long as I wore my hat, they would assume that I was what I said I was. She shot an accusing glance at Twilight. I never dreamed that any pony would be so rude as to rip my hat off in public. Twilight looked at the ground. But wait, how did you manage to make your own magic? How did you make the wagon disappear? The wagon never disappeared. You saw the stage unfold and the fireworks come out, but there are more hidden sections that I built in. Some of them have mirrors. When I pulled back the curtain, the mirrors were fucked where I pulled it, to back, onto where the wagon is. Twilight looked all over the room. That must have taken a lot of work to know exactly where to put the mirrors and curtains. Trixie waved a hoof passing off the compliment. But how did you read Snips and Snail's mind and know that they stole the cookies? asked Twilight. I didn't. When I first came into town, I saw them sneaking out of the bakery with cookies in hand. Whenever I go to a new town, I always come early to try to spy out secrets I can use in my show. Twilight stood up. All right, but what about the brass instruments? I saw them floating in midair and playing themselves. Trixie walked past Twilight and opened a panel. The instruments were still there. A thin, very thin cord, the same color as the back of the display, holds them up. I have them rigged to play automatically. Twilight ran her hoof through the area above the instruments and felt the string move the instruments. Well, does that answer all your questions? asked Trixie. You can go back now and tell every pony that you know all of Trixie's secrets. Keep humiliating me. You clearly enjoy it so much. Twilight was looking at all the other amenities in the wagon. You must have practiced for hours every day to make sure you could pull off all these tricks. Not to mention building in all of these secrets. Whatever. All that practice couldn't really make magic. It's time for you to go. Trixie pushed open the door. Twilight walked to the door, then decided that she couldn't leave her here. It's time for us to go. We've got a magic show to put on. What? As the sun rose over the town square, Trixie pulled the wagon back into position. Snips and snails were idling about in the square, playing leapfrog with each other. Trixie stood and gave them an apologetic smile. They turned their faces in disgust. Rarity, Rainbow, and Applejack were shopping at a booth. Trixie tried to look at them. Well, look who's back, said Applejack, as she too turned her up, up her head. 